Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be in a post-apocalyptic era where we're going to be having heroes that are in our battlefields along with units trying to take each other out. We're going to be using tactics and technologies and ranged weapons and melee weapons where we try to take each other out in this card game called Roan. Now this is going to be a rule school. I'm going to teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rule book. I'm also going to give you a quick overview of what you're trying to do right at the beginning. So let's take a look. Roan is a tactical card game for two to four players where you'll be living out the life of one of these different heroes throughout the game. And throughout the life of that hero, you'll be leveling up from levels one all the way to three and upgrading the amount of resources and or cards you'll get to draw throughout the game. Throughout the game, you'll be playing units onto your battlefield, which will then be able to attack with sometimes ranged and or melee combat abilities. And you'll be trying to break through the defense of the opponent's hero, which will cause them to lose cards from their player deck and or their hands to their graveyard. And you're trying to beat them by removing the last cards from their deck and or their hands. You'll also be playing tactic cards, which allow you to play cards with special abilities to react to what your opponent's doing, even when it's not your turn. And you'll also be using technologies, which will help you home in on strategies throughout the game. To set up, you'll first take all of the player cards and shuffle them. And those cards are made up of unit cards that say unit here and tactic cards that say tactic right there. You will shuffle those all up into one large deck and each player will be dealt 24 cards face down. Those are the player decks. Then you'll construct each of the hero decks. There's six of them in the game and they say hero right here. Now each of these have the same hero but levels one, two, and three. And what you want to do is put the one on top of the two, the two on top of the three, so it is a hero deck. And there's six of these hero decks in the game, and you can select which one you'd like to be. Now I'm using the Roan playmat here, which does not come with the base game, but it will help me teach you the game easier. Here I've placed that hero in levels one, two, and three, right in the hero spot. And in the deck, I have my 24 card player deck. Now this whole area in front of you is called the battlefield. In fact, the hero is actually part of the battlefield, even though it might look separated here. Uh, normally it's in the battlefield. Also technologies are part of the battlefield, but we're actually not gonna play with those during the first game. Next, you'll take all of the technology cards that say technology right there, and you'll actually remove them from the game because if it's your first game or a beginner player, you don't need to use these to keep the game a little bit easier to learn for the first time. Each player is going to be given a water dial. This is how you track your resource in the game, which is water. You're going to randomly determine who is going first. The first player will set this to zero. The next player will be sending it to two. Now each player is going to draw six cards off the top of their shuffled player deck. And once per game right now, they can decide if they don't like their hand, they can send as many cards as they want in any order at the bottom of their player deck and then they draw up the same amount of cards back into their hand. Or they can shuffle in all of the cards back into the deck and draw back up to six. This is a one-time mulligan rule. The object of the game is to remove all the cards from your opponent's deck and in their hand because those represent the health of their hero. As the hero takes damage, cards are gonna be moved from the top of their deck or from their hand into the graveyard. Once all those cards are gone, their hero has no life left and you've won the game. This is called the life bound system. Let's show you a little bit more about the hero cards. Each hero card will have the amount of water that they get each round. That's essentially your water income, and that is tracked by your water dial. So when this player gets his income, this would go up by six, for example. They also have a card income. This one is zero, but as the card gets leveled up to level two, you'll start to be able to see that. We'll talk about leveling up later. These cards also have an economic ability. For example, this allows me to get one more water or to draw one card from the top of my player deck. Uh, there's also a passive ability where this says when your unit deals a damage to an opponent's hero, gain one water. There's also some activated abilities, which we'll go over later. Now there's two types of other cards that you'll be playing during the game. One of them are called tactic cards. When you play one of these cards, it would just essentially activate the ability that's here. But anytime you play a card, you have to be able to spend the resources and able to trigger it. In this case, it's always right here. This says it has to use four water in order to do that. So you would need to expend four water from your water dial in order to play this. 
Also, you would need to at least have your hero at the level of the card. In this case, our hero's level is one, and this is level one, so we could play it as long as we could pay the cost, and then we would do what the card said. We'll go over a lot of what these things do later. Now, as soon as tactic cards are played, they go in your graveyard. The graveyard essentially is a discard pile. It always goes face up, and you can choose to put it on top or on the bottom of your graveyard, and this is important because to get cards out of your graveyard, we'll talk about recycling those later, you can only recycle from the top of your graveyard. But if this was not a level one, this was level two, we could not play this now because our hero is not leveled up to level two yet, so we couldn't even play this even if we had the amount of water needed. The other type of card you could play is called a unit, and you would play it face up facing you, in the battlefield. Now let's talk about these cards a little bit. There's some different things about them. Number one is the activation cost. Again, you'd have to spend seven water. Your hero would have to at least be this level. Other items is this card has two health to start with. You'll be able to uh, gain health throughout the game as well. There is both melee and ranged attack values there. And some of the cards will have some keywords which will trigger at certain times. We'll go over those later. Notice that on the side of the card, you have a one, a two, and a three, those are different exhaustion points. If you wanted to attack with this card, you would essentially exhaust it to the yellow one, so it would be like this facing you, and now this is like that, and you'd be able to attack. This is called the rotation system. We'll talk about uh, rotating it the other way and getting it back to normal later. And speaking of that rotation system, your own hero has it as well, where if you were going to activate this ability, notice this is purple and it has a one, if you wanted to activate this and get one water or draw one card, you would rotate this hero once so it's in the purple like that. If you had wanted to activate this ability, which has a two and a yellow, which would exhaust a target card one time, you would exhaust this like this so that the yellow is facing you. And then later on, you would need to finally get it back up like this for later. So at a high level, let's say we just placed this card face up and we wanted to attack, we wanna attack the opponent's hero. So we would then exhaust it to, so that the yellow is facing us like this. And let's just say that player was not able to defend and they took a damage. And every time you take a damage, for each damage, you'll put one card from either the top of your deck or in your hand on the top of the graveyard or the bottom of the graveyard, remembering that you'll be able to recycle the ones on top later. Now let's say we played an additional unit. We played it face up, we want to attack, we would then flip it, exhaust it to here, and we would attack, and let's say that player took another damage and they would have to do the same thing by placing a card in their graveyard. Now let's look at a different example. We're looking at the opponent's battlefield now. They have one card that's been uh, exhausted because it had attacked previously, and they have one unit that is face up. Any unit that is faced normally like this is known as a guardian. When you attack an opponent, you can only attack guardians first. Then you can attack the heroes and or uh, exhausted cards. So for every card they have face up, that's essentially a defender that you have to go through first in order to get to the rest of their cards, including their hero. Now let's say these are two different battlefields. This is us, this is the opponents. We both have a guardian out here. Let's say we wanna attack with this card. We would normally exhaust it like this. I'm gonna turn it back just so it's easier to read for you, but you would need to exhaust this to this yellow number here to attack. Uh, and then we're going to attack. And the first thing you do, so we're gonna attack this player here, is we look at the ranged attack. We have zero, they have one. So we would actually take one damage, putting that damage token on. So we only have one health left. If we're both still alive, then we would go to the melee attack. We have two, they have none. This player would take two damage, but they only have one health. So this player would be destroyed and would be put into their player's graveyard, again, on the top or the bottom. So let's say it was the other way around. Let's say this player did the attacking and we go to ranged first. This player has one, this player has this, and this player now only has one health, but then we go to melee, this player would destroy this player, this one would go to the graveyard. Since this was the defender, if the defender stays alive throughout the attack, it essentially just gets exhausted one time. And at the end of combat, you're gonna remove any stat modifier tokens. For example, this is one for melee, this is one for ranged attack, these would be removed. Any damage or health tokens on the unit stay there until the unit dies. It's also important to note that if I've attacked with all of my units in the battlefield and they're all exhausted, I have no defense, I have no guardians. So if the other player played this and attacked with it, and they had exhausted it to attack, it would have done two damage, and I would have had to have taken two damage, which is take two cards from my hand and or my deck and put it in the graveyard. It's also important to note that even if this unit were attacked, it was defended well, 
even if it won the battle, it would still be exhausted, and so now the other player can come through my defense because I now have no guardians. And once I have no guardians, any unit or the hero can be attacked by the opponent. Now we talked about cards going to the top or the bottom of the graveyard. This is important because on your turn, you can recycle the top card by discarding that many cards off the top of the graveyard. You also must at least have that level on your hero. So our hero is level one, this card's level one, we can recycle this card and it costs two, which means the next two cards get completely removed from the game. Now, if you recycle a tactic card, you will activate its ability and then this card will be completely removed from the game. If you recycle a unit card, it goes into the battlefield and it gets exhausted two times. Speaking of leveling up the hero, this is the cost to be able to do that. So I would have to spend 15 water to make this player a level two. This would sort of just go underneath this. Now, if this card was exhausted and you level up, you exhaust this at the same way that the other one was. Essentially, exhaustion does not change when you level up. Now we've talked about how to play the game uh, in a general sense. Now let's talk about the flow of the game and through each round. Now the first phase is the refresh phase. And when it's your turn, every person on your battlefield is gonna get refreshed one time. So this player was at an exhaustion of one, you go once and this player is now active. This player had attacked last turn and was exhausted three times and they would then turn to two because they've been refreshed one time. The second phase is the beginning of turn phase where some cards on the battlefield will have effects that are triggered at the beginning of your turn. Next is the income phase where your hero will get income of water. You'll put your water dial up and you'll draw some cards if it has some there. The next phase is the main phase and this was a lot of what I've already been showing you, but this is when you're going to be playing cards. You can play unit cards, you can level up a hero, you can recycle uh, cards out of your uh, graveyard, of whether it's a unit or a tactic card. You can declare an attack, and you can declare that you end a turn. That's the normal. Those are called slow effects, and those are the ones that are played on your turn. Now, when it's the other player's main phase, you can play a tactic card. These are called fast effects uh, because these are played out of turn. So they might be doing something, you could throw down a tactic card. The other player can react and what's called stack another tactic card on top of it. And then you could stack another one on top of that and they get resolved last to first. So this would go first, then this would go next, then this would go last and you'd continue until the stack is completely resolved. Activated abilities are also fast effects, meaning they can be played on opponent's turns, and these are in some technology cards, some hero cards as shown here, and some of the units in the expansion. And remembering that when you resolve a tactic card, it goes to your graveyard, either top or bottom. And the end of turn phase, it's just like the beginning of turn phase, where some cards in your battlefield might trigger at the end of turn, and you must enact those, and you can do them in any order. Then after that, you make sure that all the stacks are gone from any fast effects, and then you check to see if it's the end game. If the player had to place their last card from their deck and their hand into the graveyard, then they have lost. Now we're going to go over some of the different keywords that you've seen on some of these cards. Battlefield. When you place this card into the battlefield for the first time, from outside of the game into the battlefield, you then activate the effect of this. In this case, it destroys one random card from the target player's hand. Now, if you have a card that says death, when this card is being moved to the graveyard, it activates. In this case, it's removed the top card of any graveyard from the game. Now, this, again, it's only when it's going to the graveyard, not if it's going back to your hand or removed from the game for good. Now, if a card has the recycle keyword, if you do recycle this card from the graveyard by paying the amount of cards in the recycle and having your hero at the right, right level, then you can activate the ability, which in this case says return the bottom card of your graveyard to your hand. Now, if you have a card with the defender keyword in your battlefield, when it is attacked and it's defending, it does not exhaust even if it's defending. Also, it acts as a guardian with priority. So if there are other guardians out there, face up, this must be the first one that is attacked. The keyword of invisibility means they cannot be the target of any effects, either by the player, yourself, or the opponent. And essentially, it can't be attacked either. So invisible units basically can't be used for guardians either since they're not really there, uh, and so they cannot be valid targets. If you have a unit on your battlefield that has the detection keyword, you can then detect the invisible cards from your opponent. So if your opponent had this in their battlefield, it acts as a normal guardian if you have the detection keyword in your battlefield. These next keywords are going to be from the expansion called Awakening. Now the combat keyword allows us to trigger when this card has been either attacked or is attacking. And in this case, it just this card would get one additional health. 
It's important to note that the combat keyword does not trigger when you're attacking a hero, even though attacking a hero is considered in general combat. The next keyword does have to do with attacking a hero though. Strike is triggered when you deal at least one damage to the opponent's hero. In this case, it says remove the top card of any graveyard from the game. Now, regardless of how much damage you do to that hero, you only do that ability once. The flying keyword means this unit can only be attacked by an opponent's unit that has more than zero ranged attack or by another flying unit. Plus, flying units must attack other flying units or units that have ranged attack before they attack ones that don't. Also, flying units cannot be guardians for those that don't have any ranged attack, and vice versa, cards with out any ranged attack cannot be guardians for flying units. If you have a unit that has a shield, it becomes a shield once this unit is destroyed off the battlefield. If you have a tactic card that's a shield, it transforms into a shield after it's been played and activated, or if it's been recycled from your graveyard. Either way, this card will stay face up and go to the bottom of your player deck. Then later on, if that shield card comes up to the top of your player deck face up, it can absorb one damage instead of it going to your hero. So if your hero is about to take damage and you have this shield that had come up to the top of your deck, you can remove it from the game to absorb one of the damages that your hero would have taken. These next keywords are going to be from the expansion called New Forces. Initiative essentially allows you the option to pay an additional resource to get an additional ability. Sometimes there'll be more than one initiatives. You can pay any or all of them that you want, assuming you can pay it, and then enact that ability, and you don't have to do any of them. The slow effect is only found on tactic cards, and those cards are typically used as fast effects, which can be played at different times during the game. This now means that it's a slow effect, which means it can only be played on your own turn, and it can't be played in reaction to the other player. After you're familiar with the game, you may want to add in some of these advanced gameplay mechanisms and variants. First is technologies. If you remember, you took all the technology cards and you separated them and took them out of the game. Each player will receive five random technology cards that they'll have face down. If you're using the mat, you'd put them face down in your technology section, which again is, is part of the battlefield. Now you can play a technology card on your turn, assuming that you have the right uh, hero level, and in this case we would exhaust it 3 to destroy 2 water from a target player. So we would play this, this would get exhausted 3, and that's that. You can have at most 3 technology cards activated uh, in your technology section. These cards do not count as part of your hand, so if you take damage you're not going to remove these from your hand. Now the base game gives you a randomized player deck. Uh, you can do a construction build which allows you to do custom decks. In this case, you would have all the cards and essentially each player gets 24 cards of unit or tactic cards, any combinations, uh, but there can never be more than two copies of the same tactic card in the deck. Also, the hero deck, you get to select which hero you want, but you must use the same hero for levels 1, 2, and 3. Also, for the technology cards, you get to pick which five are in your hands. And for technology cards, you get to choose which five are going to be to your availability during the game, but you can never have more than one copy of any of the technology cards. Now, instead of playing the head-to-head -head game, you can play a team game, which is two versus two. Each team shares the same battlefield, so regardless of who placed the units, they both get to use them. Also, on both uh, turns of a team, the uh, refresh phase happens, and regardless of who placed them, all of them get refreshed on both teammates' turns. Now, both teammates also share the same deck and graveyard, but the deck, instead of it being a 24-card deck, it is going to be a 36-card deck, so make sure you change that in the setup. Both players share the technology area, and they start the game with a randomized section of 8 technology cards. Now, each teammate gets to decide who plays the technology cards and when they're played, and each teammate can play up to a maximum of three technology cards up onto the battlefield. So as a team in total, they can have up to six technology cards up in the battlefield. In turn order goes team one, player one, team two, player one, team one, player two, team two, player two, and it keeps going like that. All four players will get their own water dial, and they use them just as they normally would. Both players from the second team get two water, and both players from the first team get zero water. The game ends the same way as soon as all the cards are gone from the 36 card deck and the hands of a certain team, the games end and the other team wins. You can also play this game in a three player mode, and in this case your player deck is made up of 28 cards. 
Now let's say we have the three players here. Let's just say this is the one card in my battlefield. This is the one card in the players to the left's battlefield and the player to the right's battlefield. The player to your left is always the primary target. It's the first target. And the player to the right is secondary. If when you attack, let's just say we attacked with this one, if the attacker survives the fight, meaning this, this player was gone, you could then attack the secondary target, which is the player to your right, with that same unit. So the same unit could end up attacking both players. Now, tactic cards can be played on any player or any card. When placing cards into the stack with three players, first the primary target has the right to react, and then the secondary target then has the right to react. Also during setup, you'll take five random cards and you will place them off to the side. This is known as the bounty deck. Now during the game, once the first player has been eliminated, the player that eliminated them as the primary target takes that five card bounty deck adds it to the bottom of their player deck. Now, if two players are eliminated at the same time, the surviving player is the winner and no one gets the bounty deck. And if all players are eliminated at the same time, the game ends in a tie. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into the game without having to read the rule book and allowing you to enjoy the game faster. If you have any additional questions, I've placed a link in the description of this video. And that specific location will help you get answers by not only myself, but also the publisher, designer, and developers of the game.